Hello awesome people! I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at the book Tower of Xanon by L. Sprague de Camp. It was published in 1948. Um, it's actually the sixth book in a series. I didn't realize that at the time. Uh, I bought my copy when I was in college uh, at, in Morgantown, West Virginia, WVU. And uh, this book doesn't say anywhere on it that it is in part of a series. Uh, it just, so I bought it from, from a used bookstore. I read it about 10 years later, about 2010. Uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, I uh, knocked it out when I was on vacation, uh, and then I uh, wanted to go back and reread it. I, I enjoyed it, and then after I read it again the second time for this channel so I could review it fresh, because uh, it wasn't that memorable after, but I didn't get to read it more than 10 years ago, so to be fair, it's, it's a while ago. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to do my review for the channel, and I wanted it to be fresh for you guys, so I went back and reread it, knocked it out last night, uh, finished it last night for the second time. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed it, uh, but it doesn't have uh, in anything. In, but then when I did some research on it today, I, I saw that it was actually a part of a series, and it's like deep into the series too. It's like the Shakespeare novel in the series, and it's the last one before another twenty-five years passes, uh, before another novel in the series passes. Uh, it doesn't read like it's a novel in the series. Um, I did some research. The, the main character appears in a previous novel, and some key events happen. I felt that, I, and so that is described here in Tower of Zanid. Are early on uh, the events of the previous novel, um, but it's not a, like a key part of his characterization or something that you need to know going into it or anything like that. It also looks like this series has a few different characters. It's just set in the same location. So it's the same series in the sense of the same location, but different characters over time. Uh, but this character um, is, is, is a human. He is on a world in a sword and planet uh, style of thing, which means uh, that it is got combining science fiction with more lower tech sort of things like swords, um, and in this case, guns instead of like laser rifles uh, and that sort of a thing. So it has more of a sort of the, uh, a science fiction d a definition. It's taking place 100 years in the future, uh, but more of a sword, and but more of a lower tech style of civilization. It's more, it feels more fantasy in times. It's called Sword and Sorcery. Uh, and so, in, in, anyway, um, it was popularized by Edgar Rice Burroughs' uh, A Princess from Mars, which took place on Mars itself and has an entire series of, of, of with, with, on Mars with a number of different cultures uh, and different things that happened there on Mars. They're pretty cool, uh, all, all mostly in a fantasy style thing, but again, with science fiction underpinning. Right, this is a, this is an intergalactic travel, intergalactic things are happening and so forth, and that was very influential, particularly in that first generation of people, um, and this is now the second generation after that. Uh, it's less popular now uh, in the forties, but it's still pretty pretty common uh, to come across a uh, sword and planet stuff now in the second generation, uh, and it's anyway sort of a combining of uh, fantasy and science fiction, but not science fantasy, which is its, its own separate genre, uh, which I've done a lot of reading them for. Uh, but because I review, do reviews for science fiction and fantasy and horror, it's got kind of two, which really more science fiction with, with the feel of fantasy than it is a proper bl a blend of the genres. But yeah, but, but again, it would count <laughs> either way. Uh, but it's considered a subgenre of science fiction. Uh, but anyway... Uh, so that's that's the genre's take, uh, and and there will be some guns and some tanks and some sort of things that are, that are happening, uh, but they're lower tech uh, kind of things. Um, there are a number of different civilizations that are happening. Uh, our key character is a person from Mars. I'm sorry, sorry from Earth rather, and he is called a Terran. So that's the name of, of humans in this future place, uh, and there are a number of different races with different uh, that are that are interacting with different uh, mechanisms. Most are humanoids, but there are some that are less humanoid uh, that we'll encounter. Uh, and our main character had some things happen to him in a previous novel, which we'll find out in the first couple of uh, chapters, just just in passing. And he is now uh, some things are not going well for him after that that happens, uh, and so now he's looking to bring back bring a change to his fortunes on this planet. Uh, in the city of Zanon, um, and he's being asked to investigate a, a temple uh, early on, and then he'll realize that somebody else is asking him early on uh, to go to a temple, so he'll he'll get paid twice for the same thing, so he's definitely up for that. And so he's going to go dig into this mysterious temple and find out what's happening, and that is the key sort of concept. And then when we find out, then we'll enter the temple, uh, and then we'll figure out what's happening, and then we'll have a war afterwards uh, for a few chapters, and then that'll wrap things up. 
nice and neat. It's about 125 pages long. Now, normally something 125 pages long would not take that long to read. Maybe two or between two and three hours, right? If you did, if you did, you know, 50 minutes a page, uh, modern, modern, and so forth. But this is much denser, uh, with a lot more pa uh, pages. Uh, words per page. Also, it's 40s, and sometimes when you're reading some some of the older things, it sometimes takes you a little bit longer for you to knock it out. So this took me about four hours for me to reread it. Uh, I spent I like to spend at least an hour a day reading. Um, in this case, I spent more like an hour and 15 minutes most days, knocking out 30 pages a day for about 120. Uh, five pages over, over the last few days. Um, so that was about an hour and 15 minutes. So over told over the course of four days, it's, it came in, you know, roughly, uh, you know, roughly five hours to knock it out, uh, which is still pretty quick compared to modern day novels, but slower than you would expect for a 125 page novel. But it was dense. A lot of things happen. Uh, there's a lot of plot that happens, but not a lot of like fight scenes, which is actually different for this genre. Uh, normally this is a genre that has a lot of combat, a bit less world building. Um, in this case, there was probably more world building and a lot of action a plot, but less like actual like combat. Most of the combat is, is, is uh, except for like one or, or the occasional man-to-man -man combat, is, is, is saved for the last few chapters of the war uh, proper. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, and then there's a couple of like small solar combats here and there uh, that take place, and there's one in the final chapter too. Uh, but then that's it. It's pretty much a light combat novel. So if you're interested in going into a comp, uh, interested in a different take on a genre that is typically very heavy on combats, but dif but different, uh, and this has a lot of political uh, thriller aspects to it. Um, there's a lot of politics in this one. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Again, it's a different take on the genre. Um, we're also reading this guy. This is my first book I ever read by the, the guy. Now I've gone back and reread the things that he wrote with Fletcher Pratt. And I've read now four things with him very recently uh, for this channel. So I want to go back and read this uh, and knock it out. Again, because it just wasn't that super fresh. I probably remembered maybe a couple things uh, from the book. But then I was going back and rereading it. Was a, lot of, a lot of things came back, and I was really enjoying it and so forth. Um, so I'm going to be giving this a 7 plus out of 10. Like a 7.2 or a 7.3, then I'm running down to a 7. Uh, but it's nice. Uh, it's got a lot of fun things they're doing. It has some interesting things to say on the genre, but it doesn't go anywhere new or interesting or has any different... You know, other than some of the basic sort of... Plot beats, there's, it doesn't have an unusual ending that you can't predict. It doesn't say anything new for the genre, right? Um, other, than, other than having some different genre aspects to it and some less combat, more of a political thriller. Um, but besides that, it's really not you know an, an unusual take on the genre. If it's something you're familiar with or if, or if it's a genre that you've already read, and again, it does not require uh, that you have read the previous books in the series. So I still wanted to go ahead and give you a review for it, even though, again, it is admittedly. But, but it's not sold as that, right? right? Nowhere on the front or the cover does it say that it's like the fifth or sixth book of a series by by uh, L. Sprague de Camp. Uh, but but it's a lot of fun, and I'll definitely enjoy it. It's Tower of Zan. Have you read it or other books in the series? If so, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about it further in the comments below. Uh, as a reminder, I keep my reviews spoiler-free. Uh, so if you want to talk about spoilers, let's, let's do it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, why not hit that subscribe button? There should be a lot more of these in the fall. Below. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an amazing day.